Hello, my name is Beth Domkowski, and I'm coming to you from the Office of Admissions at Rowan University in Glassboro, New Jersey. Welcome to Rowan Confidential. I am here today with Richard Jones. Hello, Richard. Hello. Richard is the Vice President of Student Engagement, formerly the Vice President of Student Life and Dean of Students. He joined us at Rowan in 2008, and he was, it is from Jacksonville, Florida. Undergraduate degrees are in literature and history. Richard has a master's in counseling, master's in counselor education with an emphasis on student development, and he is currently finishing his EDD in educational leadership, policy, and law at Alabama State. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank I you really for appreciate me. it. Um, lots of questions for you. Who are you? What do you what, what do you think about? What makes you tick? What wakes uh, you up in the morning? I'm a Scorpio, and I like long walks on the beach. Um, Pina coladas. <laughs> <laughs> what wakes me up in the morning is being able to have a career that connects with my passion. Okay. That is absolutely what gets me up in the morning. And what is your passion? Oh, my passion is serving students, making sure that students have a transformational experience, uh, particularly here at Rowan, since that's where I am. It is. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that they can go out and do great, wonderful things in the world. Okay, excellent. So how does what you do impact the world? Well, so I believe that if we create systems where students can be successful and they receive a comprehensive education inside and outside of the classroom, mm -hmm. and they develop a sense of self-worth, um, autonomy, and they become actualized, then once they graduate, then they go out into the world and they empower other people to do the same thing, right? Excellent. And, yeah. so, and that's how we transform the world. Right, And so that's how we impact the world, by making sure that we are giving students an opportunity to get to know themselves so that then they can carry that forth and, and have other opportunities to impact other people. Very true, very true. Now, when we were speaking prior to this, I learned something about you that I didn't know. Yes. Um, you did not start out in this field. I did not. What? Where did you start? <laughs> what was your first job? <laughs> So my, well, okay. So my first job was an admissions officer, right? Um, going out recruiting mm -hmm. students to go to, a, uh, to attend a university in Florida. Okay. But that was not my career plan. No, of right. course not. My yes. career plan was to be an attorney. You were going to be an attorney. Absolutely. Okay. And so um, I, was, I was really active as an undergraduate, I was an RA, uh, I was a student senator, uh, I was on the board of trustees for the Black Student Union, uh, I was a presidential envoy, and so I was, once again, really active. Mm -hmm. And I was walking on campus my senior year, and the vice president for student life walked up to me, his name was Dr. Roland Buck, I, never, I will never forget this day, he said, hey Jones, what are you doing when you graduate? And so I was like, I'm going to law school. And so he was like, did you take the LSAT? <laughs> and I was like, what's that? Oh, no. And he said, well, that's like the SAT for law school. And so I immediately panicked, right? Because while I did well um, in school, mm -hmm. like as far as grades, sure. I'm a horrible standardized test taker. Oh, no. Right? And so my GPA was high, and my high school GPA was high, but my SAT scores weren't high, mm -hmm. right? And so he was like, well, you're going to have to take the LSAT if you're going to go to law school. So I was like, oh, okay. And so I signed up to take the LSAT two weeks later. Oh, my goodness. No right? preparation. No prep. No okay. Kaplan. No uh -huh. nothing. And you can imagine what my score was. Did you know what type of test it was or what I had you were walking no clue. into? I had no clue, you know, because, you know, the internet was still something relative. I'm completely dating myself right now. <laughs> um, it was still something relatively new, sure. right? And so there wasn't, you know, practice test oh, no. or anything like that. And so I just went in and I took the test cold turkey mm -hmm. and I did not do well. 
And um, and I went back to Dr. Buck and I told him that I didn't do well. And so he said, well, you know what? You're pretty active. We've got this opportunity coming up as an admissions officer um, here at the university. And we think that you should apply. Okay. And they had a particular emphasis that they wanted to recruit national merit scholars, achievement scholars, and also increase diversity on campus. And so I was like, hey, well, you know, there's no other game playing right now. Let's so I might as well put on my cleats, yeah. right? And so I applied for the job, and I, 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 I was a successful candidate, and I never looked back because I realized that I was giving people information that could change their lives. And, and I did not have that information, no. right? Yeah. And so I was empowering people to make informed choices, and that was all I needed. And I have to ask, having been an admission counselor myself many years ago, mm -hmm. um, what was your territory? So my territory was because I was, um, it was all over Florida. Okay. And because I was specifically looking for national um, merit achievement finalists mm -hmm. and achievement um, finalists, um, I had more of the prestige schools. Okay. And so my territory was all over Florida. All over Florida. All over Florida. As a matter of fact, you all would love this. So I don't know if there are any movie buffs out there, right? But um, there's a movie director right now, a movie producer. His name is Will Packard. Okay. And he has produced movies like Drumline and a lot of the, oh, Girls Trip okay. with Queen Latifah. Oh, yeah. I recruited him Did you to, really? go to, out, to go to the university. So I, re I met him when he was a, in the 12th grade. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. That's great. So from admissions, where, where did you go from there? How, so, how, take me on your journey. All right. So from admissions, and when I realized that I wanted to do this as a career, mm -hmm. um, I quickly learned that the way that I wanted to impact the lives of students, um, I couldn't do it as an admissions officer, okay. right? Because a lot of time, a lot of times, admissions officers don't get the opportunity to make policy for the university. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, and you and only so, see the students for a very small period of time. Right. Right. Get them in, settled, and then and then go never recruit hear from the them. right, and <laughs> yeah. then go recruit the next group of uh -huh. students to come in, and um, and so. I started looking around at the people who were setting policy at the university and what sort of choices that they made regarding their career, and I saw that they all had master's degrees. Yes. And so I realized that I had to get a master's degree. And so I made that decision. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the interesting thing now. Because now I'm an admissions officer and I'm used to now doing research about schools, I said that I'm going to do it that way now, okay. right? Because when I chose... Um, my university to attend, it was because I didn't do my AP English homework, and the admissions counselor from the university where I attended mm -hmm. uh, was going to be in the auditorium during the same time I had to turn in my AP oh homework. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so that's, that's hysterical. Right? That's how I chose my university. Oh, man. And, um, and I went home, and I told my dad that I was going, to, that I wanted to go to that university, and he was like, oh, that's good. The football team is really good. <laughs> No major, nothing. nothing. Right, just the, the football, football team was ending. And so I said I wanted to do it very differently. I wanted to be intentional, right, about where I wanted to go. And so I got on the phone, mm -hmm. called directory assistance, remember, because the internet Absolutely. wasn't a big thing mm -hmm. during that time. I mean, it was either that or look it up in the phone book. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And by mistake, um, I was interested in attending an HBCU which was a historically black college or university. And I asked the directory assistant for Jackson State University in Mississippi. By mistake, she gave me Mississippi State University, which oh is a goodness. right, which is a PWI, is a um, predominantly white institution. Okay. And so I was like, well, I'm gathering information. I might as well get information from them Talk as well. To them, sure. Right. You're and supposed so, to be there. So by the time I got off the phone, mm -hmm. right? They were sending me the application. Mm -hmm. I had an interview um, to for a hall director position because I was an RA as undergrad. an undergraduate. Yeah. And I never applied to anywhere else. And I ended up going to attend Mississippi State University. Oh, my goodness. Right. And so after Mississippi State, um, I it was time to look for a job. And I applied for a job at Vanderbilt University. Mm -hmm. And I... 
I was the successful candidate at Vanderbilt, and I spent about seven years there Mm -hmm. and got really awesome opportunities there. And so the rest is kind of history. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept progressing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, Sometimes, though, we all get a little wrench in our plan. Things don't go quite as planned. Even if we don't necessarily have a plan, we get steered onto a different track. Can you tell us about a time when an outcome wasn't what you expected and how you moved forward? Well, I absolutely. I think that <laughs> I've never had a plan. Okay. Right? And not until recently. So my plan was to go to law school. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And it didn't turn out. And so I made the best of it. And I think that I had to adapt, be nimble, right? And realize the benefits of what was being offered. Right. Yeah. And fortunately, I landed in a very good place. Mm-hmm. Um, but from that point on, I realized the importance of making a plan. Yes. And and I think that that's just in life. You know, life does not always go the way that you plan. Yes. So I think that one of the skills that we have to master is to be nimble. Right. To be able to adapt. Right. Make the adjustments um, and turn that negative into a positive. Because I, I really believe in divine providence. Okay. I don't believe that there's anything. I don't believe in accidents. I believe that everything happens for a reason, right? Absolutely. And so either you're going to control what happens to you or it's going to happen to you, right? And so you might as well be in control of it and have a plan. But understand that the oh, I'm feeling like I'm really all metaphysical now, that the universe has a plan for you know all what? of us. Let's go for it. You know, the universe People has a plan for all of this. us. Yeah. And I think that the plan for us is to fulfill our passion. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's, I just really want. And I, I believe that the universe sets up opportunities for us to to define our passion, to hone our passion, and then to fulfill our passion. Does that make sense? It does. Absolutely. Okay. I'm I'm sitting here reflecting on my, my own experiences with that. Yeah. And how I can draw direct correlations. Um, my first admissions job, I was I interviewed for the position a year before I actually got it. And my plan was to take the job, quit, mm-hmm. go to grad school when I got into grad school, and do whatever it was I was going to grad school for. When they didn't hire me, mm-hmm. I went to grad school. Turned out I was in the wrong field. Dropped out of grad school. A couple weeks later, the school called and said their counselor didn't work out. Would I be interested in coming in wow. for an interview? It happens. It happens. It's just yeah. sometimes. But you have to be open to it, right? Give yourself over, yes. Yeah. I like that. Give yourself over. Yep. I like that. And you've got to trust that, you know, that great things are going to happen yes. for you. Yeah. I agree. So if you were to go back, mm. back in time... Before college, mm. there you are. You're 18. What advice would you give your 18 year old self? Just one, or can it be a few things? It's your show. Okay, you can do whatever right. you want. Hmm. Chill. Chill. Right. Okay. Um, I would say that. Um, make really good friends. Mm-hmm. Be authentic. Um, I, so I developed this, this philosophy, um, over my years of living and not to worry about what people think. Oh, that's so hard for the, for students. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I just realized that when you worry about what other people think, you become a slave to their thoughts. And so I've never met a happy slave and so I, I believe that you've got to do the thing that is true to you and not worry about what other people may think. As long as you are not hurting other people and as long as you're p- treating people with fairness uh, and that you are being kind and making decisions with integrity, you're going to be okay because you're going to find your tribe. And the people that love you for you, they're going to love you. So be yourself. Be yourself. And I know that sounds like an after-school special, right? (laughs) But it is so true. If you are yourself, then you will 
this light will come from you and you will attract the people who really appreciate you for yourself. I couldn't agree more. And lastly, why Rowan? So Rowan is, you know, I, I tell people that when Rowan is friendly, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I grew up in the South. And so I had these ideas about what it would be like to live up North and work at a university that was in the North, right, in New Jersey. And so my ideas about New Jersey was very industrial. Okay. It was probably more North Jersey probably, yes. than South, South Jersey. Jersey, right? And so when I interviewed here, people were so friendly. People, you know, I was sitting sitting on a bench between interviews and people would pass by and they would say hello. Hello. And, right, hello. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is cool, uh-huh. right? And um, But as I started working here, I started paying attention to the standard of care that I believe students get here, mm-hmm. right? I think there are a lot of people here. Um, Dr. Jim Newell is one of them. Okay. Um, they understand what a transformational this experience is for people. I think they get, there are a lot of people who get the fact that a lot of our students are still first generation college yes. students. Um, and they understand that our students here want connection mm-hmm. with their faculty and staff. Um, and, and that's what I like here. I, I think that there's an opportunity here for some really good relationship building, yes. right? Relationship building that can last you far beyond your four years here. And I believe that there is a genuineness here um, that students experience with faculty and staff. And yeah, and so I, I think that as a parent, I would send my student here because I believe that there are enough people here that will care about my student the way that I would. Does that make sense? Of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have any closing remarks? I would say for closing remarks that think critically about the decisions that you make because the decisions that you make have lifelong ramifications. I would say choose your friends wisely. Uh, make sure that you cultivate relationships with people who can love you just as much as you you love them. And remember that there are no value in things that it's only value in people. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been Rowan Confidential. (laughs) 